All right, hey everybody, uh, Rob here from Bestseller Publishing and our uh, BSPU live call. Um, something I think will be really important for a good number of you, but maybe not all of you. And uh, as some of you are in the midst of, you know, currently writing your first book, this may not be 100% applicable, but it could give you some things to think about as you're creating your book, and that is how to keep it fresh with new content and offers, and specifically, I mean, as related, of course, to your book, and how to actually repurpose some of the stuff that you've already created to, you know, make for an even more powerful offer to the marketplace, right? Your income uh, and the impact, quite honestly, that you have on the world is going to be really dependent upon a couple of things. Obviously, it will be dependent upon the quality of your content. You want to put out something that you as an expert, you know, are proud of and that will make a difference in people's lives. But uh, what good is quality content if nobody knows about it? Nobody ever sees it. So it's not just the quality of your content. It's people consuming your content. It's you making offers for people to consume your content, read your books, go through your materials, buy your courses, and perhaps if you do it, um, offer services, coaching, consulting, et cetera. And so depending on, you know, what your business model looks like, you need to have fresh content that you're putting out, again, depending on what your model is and how you plan on attracting clients and also how big, honestly, you plan on your business being. So, for example, I want to give you a couple of exa examples. I have several clients' books here, uh, as well as, obviously, my own, because I want to show you what we're doing. I'm going to be going off uh, the face-to-camera stuff and sharing my screen with you and show you kind of live action what we're doing with uh, my newest workbook, which is, you know, from Publish, Promote, Profit. I'm going to talk you through how we developed it, how it was created, which wasn't all that difficult, and how we kind of made it sexified, you know, so people want it, right? Sexied it up, if you will. I don't know if that's a word, but there you go. Um, so let me give you an example on the other end. So this is my client, Robert Raleigh. We did this book for him several years ago now. And Robert has a pretty big business, um, primarily in the EU, right? Um, he uh, does large live events all over the European Union. And uh, this is the only book that he has. And he doesn't have a workbook associated with this. He doesn't have other content associated with this, except for the courses that he sells and his live events, which then lead into coaching, consulting, and that kind of thing. Robert has no intention at all to write another book or to create a workbook from this. And he continues to use this book to bring in uh, thousands of new people every single year into his live events that he runs himself and speaks and then brings on coaching clients, consulting clients, course sales, etc. So with Robert's model, you know, using a book to establish authority, credibility, expertise, and then using that book further to bring people to a live event in a large geography, right? The entire European Union. Um, no problem. One book over, even though nothing else has been created in several years, continues to function beautifully, right? No problem whatsoever with uh, bringing in new clients that haven't seen this book or that want to, you know, see Robert face to face and come to his event. Now we do things a little bit differently. As you know, I do a few live events a year. Uh, primarily I do live events uh, that are client only events, which I want to tell you, make sure, let you know, we have a couple spots left. These are free events. They're for our done for you clients only. And we have one coming up in two and a half weeks. I keep them small, just 25 people, but I do have a couple spot, spots available for that. So if you're interested, make sure you, you post below and, and give me some info. Anyway, let me know that you're interested because the, the spots will go and then we cap it anyway. It's free. I'm not charging any of my clients for it, so I'm not trying to sell anything. Anyway, uh, that was the commercial uh, to not sell something. But there you go. So we do things differently, as you know. Uh, we do a lot of paid advertising. And that paid advertising focuses on what we call a free plus shipping funnel, 
a free plus shipping funnel is offering my book for free. All someone has to do is pay for a shipping and handling charge of $7.95 in the United States, a little larger uh, outside of the U.S. And then they come into our funnel and there's a series of upsells or downsells, ultimately bringing people back to uh, do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, consultative call with an author development coach to see if they might be interested in having us help them or help you, as you guys have, with the ghost writing, the publishing, the book launches, the media PR, et cetera. Well, when you use online marketing, and especially focused on just a couple platforms like, like Facebook and Instagram, the, the, the ads uh, begin to get fatigued. And they get fatigued because the image is the same, the book cover is the same, et cetera. And so you need to craft new content and or repurpose your content so that the offer appears different and that people that haven't bought it, but maybe have seen it a few times, aren't fatigued by it and then dive right back in or dive in for the very first time. So we created my black book of writing, marketing, PR, and media directly from my main book, Publish, Promote, Profit, and just launched it the, this past week. Now, I'm going to give you all the details on launch because it's like, absolutely crushing it. It's doing fantastic. And we're giving Publish, Promote, Profit a little bit of a breather, a rest. Now, we're going to continue to use Publish, Promote, Profit, but we've driven millions of people, millions of eyeballs to the Publish, Promote, Profit offer in the last eight, nine months. And it's begun to be fatigued, right? Our ads aren't doing as well and the funnel isn't doing as well because we've driven so much traffic to it. So all I did, and I'm going to share with you exactly how I did it, talk to you about at least for, I think, a good percentage of you, this is a good model for you to build a workbook down the road if you're interested, especially in paid advertising and marketing, um, to build that workbook that can be another offer that you interchange, right? The workbook will begin to lag a little in maybe three, four, five, six months. We'll flip back over to Publish Pro Profit. And as you know, I'm writing a new book myself and, and that book will be ready about that same time. And we'll just start rotating these various offers and continue rotating various offers. So short version is, you know, depending on how you want to use your book to attract clients, you might not need to do any of this, right? Robert doesn't really need to do any of this. Uh, at the same time, if you're going to use your book in conjunction specifically with paid advertising and online marketing, then you probably are going to want to have some other things that you do. And look, by the way, even uh, if you don't need to, it's not really difficult to create a workbook from your book especially for 99% of my clients that are coaches, consultants, entrepreneurs, brick and mortar business owners, right? Um, you know, that you're writing a nonfiction book about your expertise. It's not that hard using the process that we use to craft the book to, to then make it into a workbook. And so if that's the case, then, you know, you should have that additional offer in there that might entice somebody. So let me, let me dive in. I'm going to begin sharing my screen with you so that you guys can see some of what we are doing right now with the, uh, the offer. So let me show you the funnel first. Okay. So this is our newest funnel. This is the, um, uh, what we call the black book of, uh, writing, marketing, PR, and media, which is the workbook. You can see this funnel looks almost exactly like the other funnel. That's because we just modeled it completely after it. But we're making a very clear, separate, distinct offer for the workbook. So I shot new video. It's short. Uh, and a lot of the same testimonials and case studies uh, I was able to use simply because the workbook is a direct take from my main book. So we used a lot of these exact same videos where people read my book, loved my book, and, and had something good to say. So let me show you the last seven days of like real numbers in my ClickFunnels accounts, in my ads. This is stuff that you guys are privy to that nobody else sees uh, because it's privileged information. Quite frankly, it's nobody's business, but I'm happy to do it for you. So we began scaling back, publish, promote, profit, right? Spending a little bit less money. So in the last week, uh, from the 26th to the 2nd, 
this has brought in 57 sales and about $2,157. Um, obviously, what I'm most concerned about is not really the gross revenue. I'm most concerned about the number of people that are buying because those are people that translate into new opportunities for us to offer our done-for-you services. Well, this is the black book of marketing. You can see that um, it's done significantly more, almost $5,000 in sales, 223 new um, marketing book buyers that have come into the funnel. Now, there's probably some overlap, but that's okay. There's not a ton of overlap. And those hyper buyers are probably buyers that would be interesting, interested in this sending to our other products and services. So I love that. And what's cool for me is this is what I've spent in the last week, $8,400. And you can see just quick addition, uh, I've brought in about $7,100, okay, or $7,150 or something like that. So yes, still a little bit in the red, but you know, literally only uh, $1,300 to bring on uh, in that period of time, eight hundred. Uh, 1,000 new opt-ins, so 1,000 new email addresses, and 57 plus 223, 275-ish new book buyers, people that actually bought this and or this and have come into the world and have, you know, been interested in other uh, types of, of services that we offer. Now, to show you the results of that, because remember, what I'm interested in is not losing money offering my book. Now, I'm happy to get 1,000 people into my funnel and 275 actual buyers that pull out their credit card and buy my stuff for only 1,000 bucks. That is a steal, the steal of the century. But here's what we're really looking at, right? This is what we do on a daily basis. These are people who have applied for a one-on-one -on -one consultative call with our author development coaches. And you can see this morning we've had, you know, just four, uh, five actually. Uh, yesterday we had 19, I already pre-counted it. You know, one, two, three, well, you can, you can see this yourself, but 19 people that applied for a call. Now, I, I can't even, our team can't even handle 19 people that filled out our complete application and applied to a one-on-one -on -one call. So it's almost like, wow, we're getting more leads than we can even handle right now into our business. So we might have to adjust our traffic, but this is a good problem, right? So the point that I'm making is this is working like gangbusters as a new offer. And all I did, nothing really is new. All I did is use the, the format of publish, promote, profit that I wrote a year ago and repurpose it for a workbook. So if you are an entrepreneur writing a nonfiction book or you're a coach, consultant, financial advisor, doctor, dentist, chiropractor, fill in the blank, right? Uh, an expert of some kind and you're writing an expert book, then you absolutely positively need to think about how can I repurpose that into a workbook of some kind. So again, these are the stats. This is the new funnel. I'll give you these links if you want, but it's really simple. It's just writingblackbook.com, but you can see it's just working like uh, absolute gangbusters, and we're pulling back the traffic on Publish Pro Profit, and we're ramping up the traffic on the workbook, and we'll be you know, making adjustments and, and trying new things and different things all along the way, but this is, you know, this is what we try to do when using paid marketing and advertising. Now, just a couple quick examples. These are just, I just went to the PR department and I grabbed two clients' books off the, the PR department's desk um, and expert books. These are just, could be yours, might not be, but just as an example, like here's one, uh, Gary Malevsky's, Gary's a uh, super, super smart entrepreneur, he wrote this book on uh, cryptocurrency, it's called uh, Crypto Economy. Uh, how easy would it be for Gary to repurpose this into a workbook with chapters on how to safely buy Bitcoin or safely buy Ethereum, how to store Bitcoin or store Ethereum, how to make sure that you're keeping the bad guys out of your cryptocurrency, the future of cryptocurrency, et cetera, would not be difficult. Obviously, the same with Danielle. This is a beautiful book that we did for Danielle. Add this to your plate. 
She's got all kinds of recipes, beautiful pictures and whatnot in here, but how easy would it be to have a workbook where somebody can just follow along and, you know, make out their own uh, dietary restrictions or things that they want to do, uh, their own nutritional uh, schedule for this week, etc. So you need to think, how can I take my book and repurpose it so that it can be used maybe one day as a workbook? Now, do you have to do it? No. But let me tell you, if you're going to use paid advertising in any um, way, shape, or form like I do, then certainly you want to absolutely think about repurposing your initial content into other forms so that you can change out the ads and mix things up a little bit. So uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, but I do want to give you a couple of hints on how we did it, like kind of step one, step two, step three. So it's not just me saying you should do something, but it's me telling you exactly how we did it. So what we did to basically repurpose Publish Promote Profit into this workbook was fairly simple, just three or four uh, simple steps. The first step, and obviously I have staff that can do this, uh, but I wanted to have my hand in it, you know, pretty significantly. But the first step was I had a staff person go through my book and basically outline, okay, what are the parts of my book? Because there's a lot of story and that's what we teach you guys to write with story, et cetera. But what are the parts of my book that can be turned into Q&A, questions that can be asked, uh, answers that can be given by a reader, and then made into a workbook format. So basically, as you know, we have, as the title reads, three sections of this book, a publish section, which is about writing and publishing your book, a promote section, which is about getting your book promoted to bestseller, and then a profit section about all the different ways that you can profit with a book. So basically, we created a workbook with three distinct sections. And each of those sections, I had a staff, go, staff member go through and just write down, okay, this, this section could be a great Q&A area for somebody to begin asking themselves questions and answering those questions to create a title for their book, create an outline for their book, create a hook for their book, uh, asking questions about who their ideal client is, who's going to buy their book, who's going to buy their stuff. The same with the promotion. Because with the promotion phase, we teach everything from how to do paid advertising, how to use social media, how to write press releases. So we had big sections in there about, okay, uh, you know, answer this question to write the first, you know, three sentences of your press release. Then answer this question to write the second part of your press release. And then add in three case studies or testimonials, you know, from Amazon for this part of your press release. In other words, it's a it's a cut and paste, really simple method for somebody to get a press release written. Now, that's just one part of it, but, uh, you know, I had a staff member go through all of that. As that staff member went through it, and, and I kind of checked the boxes, I, I went through it with them. I said, okay, this is good, this is good, and I don't like that one. We don't need that in there, or there's too much teaching, too much kind of cutting and pasting from this and not enough asking questions because in my opinion, a workbook needs to ask a lot of questions and, and bring people through the process, get them thinking. So we, we removed some stuff, we added some stuff. And then I, I basically said, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think how many questions um, within this section are necessary to get someone to the point of finishing their press release or writing, uh, crafting the hook for their book or writing the table of contents for their book, right? Um, so think through that and then just add in the lines that somebody would, would need to have in that particular section to do so. So as an example, let's just open up right to the beginning. Right in the beginning, it's laying the foundation, which is, okay, what are the keys to a solid foundation? And what do you need to think about before you begin writing? Just a couple of paragraphs and then boom, okay. So... Um, why do you want to write your book? Like right out of the gate, uh, a nice little paragraph that explains who their intended audience should be, who you want to reach, and then uh, some lines for that person to really think through it. Number two, what is the goal of your book? In other words, what are you trying to accomplish with your book? What's the big picture of it? So we've taken somebody through our project management process with our, our workbook. That's exactly what you need to do with writing your workbook if you were to repurpose it from this. So we went through it, 
copied and pasted, you know, added the, the lines and the questions, you know, added some interesting questions that would get people thinking, and then simply sent it to, through to one of our editorial staff, proofreaders, and then bam, we were done. Now, kind of the, the finished product, we wanted to look very different than this. Why? Because remember, I'm repurposing my content for an entirely new audience, right? Or to get the attention. So I said, you know what, let's make it black. And what can we do to really make it cool? So uh, Mike Fredericks, who does uh, all of our printing and fulfillment, uh, and Mike and his company are fantastic. He said, hey, I got some ideas. Let me, let me throw some stuff together and send it to you. And I just fell in love with it. I, it's, it's a really nice kind of hard cover. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's silver glossy. Uh, it's, a, it's a matte black uh, cover. And of course, we have a really nice spine on it. Now, you know, it's more expensive to print this than it is to print this. But that's okay. I'm willing to spend the extra couple dollars to reach an entirely new audience and to create something that, you know, really pops. Like, you know, this is one of the nicest workbooks I've ever personally seen. So when someone gets this, they're going to they're going to think, "Wow, okay, bestseller publishing does things right. I really like how they do it." So, let me give you a recap. We want to keep it fresh with your content and your offers you don't necessarily need to, right? You can have one great book that you can ride for a long time depending on how you use it, just like Robert is using his. But if you're using it and putting it in front of tons of people, however way you, you decide to do that, then you are gonna need to think, okay, there's gonna be a little bit of uh, a tiredness of this. And so you wanna, create something fresh and you want to repurpose your content, we do that with a workbook. Not hard to do. It's something you should be thinking about doing. And then of course I showed you my statistics as well as uh, how it's done. It's done fabulously, obviously 19 scheduled calls. We can't even handle that many scheduled calls. And of course, you know, when you're getting a thousand people to opt in and hundreds of people buying your books every single week, that's going to be the result that you get. So I hope this is helpful. This is how you can keep it fresh. This is how you can give people more of what they want. Do it in an excellent manner, right? And at the same time, really make a difference with your income and your impact. There you go.